Welcome back to Anderson Acres. We're out here today with some of our plants. It is well into fall. We have had a few frosts, just a few light frosts. So like our snapdragons aren't truly dead. They've rebloomed, but we're pretty much getting to the end of the season. We're going to be getting to the point where we have to pull all these probably in a week or so. We are well into fall here. Remember, this is Canada. <laughs> So we don't have as much flexibility as some other areas. You can see my peas and beans have for the most part been harvested. They are going to pretty much die off now. Um, this wasn't done with a whole lot of thought anyway. But what I wanted to talk about, we might get a few peas still. We're getting a few pea pods. We might be okay there. But what I wanted to talk about today was actually, as we go check on our trees, I wanted to talk about the basics of good gardening and creating a good garden because it's really tempting to for example go out and buy plants and throw them wherever you have and actually we kind of did that this year because we had only just moved here so i didn't really have time to uh, create what i wanted to create i didn't have the time because we had just moved here in the spring so i kind of just wanted to get some stuff in the ground just for fun but um it's really tempting to do that However, the best gardens don't start with picking fancy plants or, you know, seeing what you can get on discount at your garden center, or even spending a lot of money on plants. That's not how gardens start. Okay, so here we have our lilacs are going dormant. You can see their leaves are starting to brown and fall. You can see we have, see, we're well into fall here. Very well into fall. Yeah. But um, the best gardens don't start that way. We're going to go this way today. But the best gardens don't start just by going and grabbing a bunch of really pretty plants and throwing them in the ground. Um, you want to narrow down your plant choices to what's right for your site. So how do you know what's right for your site? Well, there are actually a bunch of different factors that determine what is right for your site. You want to consider things like soil quality, wind exposure so we're really exposed to the wind right here that's why first of all we're planting some trees that are wind break and we're picking things that withstand wind really well for up here because this is really exposed to the wind you can see how exposed we are yes the farmers have plowed their fields for the fall so you can see how exposed to the wind we are so wind exposure is a big one not all plants deal with wind very well you also want to consider sun or shade so we get a ton of sun up here, but the moment we turn the corner, we go into a rather shady area. That matters. That is a big deal. Those are your three biggest factors. Sun and shade, soil quality, and wind exposure. Uh, full sun plants, for example, getting back to sun and shade, full sun plants are not exactly going to thrive in the shade. Okay, you put something that wants full sun in the shade and it's going to die. Um, shady plants wither in full sun. So if you like, like, we have a lot of flowers that we like to plant that we don't because this is really, really, see? See how shady this is? We get into here. So this area, we're still figuring out what to do because it's so shady most of the day. So yes, we have lots of fallen leaves. No, we do not rake our leaves. I will talk about that in a separate video. We do not rake up our leaves. First of all, I'm not going to do that because it would take forever. Look how many leaves we got. Second, there are good environmental reasons for leaving your leaves where they fall. But that's not what we're talking about today. <laughs> but someone's going to ask me, don't you rake your leaves? No, we do not rake our leaves. Um, you also want to consider the temperatures in your regions. So if you get a really cold winter like we do, you're going to have a lot of things that simply will not grow or for example pepper plants are actually perennials i uh, know <laughs> but here we have to grow them as uh annuals because pepper plants can't, can't survive on winters there's a lot of plants like that a lot of plants that the further north you are or the further south you are depending on where you are in the world that you can't grow them because they might be annuals for you but they're really perennials so yes we harvested our potatoes we had to Dogs helped. See? Potato harvest. We actually got some really nice potatoes. We ate them. Anyway, so you also might have scorching summers. Not all plants can handle the 
harsh scorches of summer. Okay, yes, it's very fall-like here right now. Leaves falling. Even as we speak. It's fun. First we got hit with acorns. Now there's leaves everywhere. It's fun. There's a chicken. There's a chicken over there. That's Cara, uh, not Caramel, Dale. Where's Caramel? Caramel's on the other side of the trees. That's Dale. <laughs> so, cats. Oh my god. So yes, um, temperatures affect your entire region. So unless you're going to move out of your region, you probably can't just suddenly grow what's not going to grow in your area. Um, before you start planning, uh, before you start planting or even planning, you do want to make sure you have learned about the sites on your property and what they can accommodate. Because your soil might not be right, your temperatures might be wrong. The two most important things... Yeah, there goes Dale. Uh, somebody asked me why Dale limps. Uh, she limps because she broke her foot a long time ago. <laughs> somebody asked me that. Anyway. Um, so the most important factors are your sun and your shade and your soil quality. So sun and shade can be altered by removing trees. You see how shady it is back here in the mornings? This is actually pretty early morning. Sunny up there. Very shady up here, but we get afternoon sun here. So, you know, pick your poison kind of thing. But you can alter sun and shade simply by adding or removing your shade cover. So if I wanted more sun back here in the morning, I could take down some of these big trees. I'm not going to because I get nice afternoon sun here. It's just fine. Hey, look, chickens. Let's go visit them. But, um, zoom in. Because they don't like me that much right now. Hey, chickens. I'm pony. But I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to remove a bunch of trees. Like, I'm not going to pull all these down. Because, one, I love the trees. There's no point in ripping them down. And, two... Frankly, we get a lot of afternoon sun here. So in the afternoon, this is going to be very, very sunny, which is nice, right? It's actually gorgeous that we get that much sun, but we get a lot of morning shade. And frankly, back here, it's sunny most of the time, except in the afternoon, the rabbits are in the shade. So sun shade, you can change simply by moving things around. Like if I didn't want this to be morning shade, I could just move that shed but I'm not going to, but I could. <laughs> so you can alter sun and shade simply by adding shade cover. I've seen people even add like gazebos over a garden just because it needed more shade because of what they were growing there. And that's fine. Um, soil is a much bigger problem. And because soil is a bigger problem, I'm not going to talk about soil today because we're actually approaching the 10 minute mark. I thought there was only going to be a five minute video, but I kept getting distracted. Hi, buddy. How you doing? Yeah, you a good bunny bun? Good bunny bun? Yeah. He's a big boy. He's going to be a big boy. He's a baby. Anyway, so um, soil is actually a much bigger problem. You've got to worry about soil preparation. You've got to worry. Hi, Mr. Otterton. Hi, bud. So nice, buddy. Nom, nom. So you have to worry about things like soil prep which is a big deal, okay? And you have to worry about your pH and you have to worry about what type of soil you have and all of that fun nonsense, because cat. So you have all of that kind of thing happening while you're trying to plant your stuff. So soil is the biggest reason gardens fail. See, all this is pretty much dried up. Yes, we picked the pumpkins, pumpkin. Something ate one pumpkin and Tristan stepped on the other one. Bad kids. Anyway, that's not the point. But, um, yeah, so soil is the biggest reason why gardens fail. And I just want to point out that we had a soil problem. Not over here. This was excellent soil, and I did harvest off of that. But you'll notice that where we planted, like, our cucumbers and stuff, because this was the only garden bed on the property when we got here, so where we planted this stuff, it didn't grow great. So you'll notice, yes, it's definitely fall. That guy's going dormant. He's a perennial. He'll come back next year. 
Uh, that's a perennial. That'll come back next year. Those are not a perennial. They're going to die. Things like that. Okay? So some of these things will come back and some of them won't. But you'll notice, like, our corn didn't do great. Our cucumbers did okay. We still have a cucumber to grab. Actually, we have two cucumbers to grab. Good on us. So they didn't do great because this soil isn't great for things like food producing crops. It's fine for flowers. So next year I'm going to be not planting food crops in here. We got some, like we were able to harvest some peppers and things like that. Um, we did manage to pull that off, but frankly, this is not ideal soil. So soil is a really, really big deal. And yes, I'm going to grab these guys. I just haven't. I, frankly, I like the birds to eat a lot of the seeds. Yeah. They were pretty in their heyday, but some flowers don't stay pretty. Not the point. Anyway, soil prep is a big, big deal. Soil is probably the reason your stuff won't grow. So I recommend things like soil testing kits, figuring out what's wrong with your soil, what you need. I am going to cover soil in more depth because soil is kind of my thing. Soil is more my thing than, um, like, the actual plants. I like prepping the garden beds, and then I usually make somebody else do all the plant care. Because I like doing the planting, and I like maintaining the soil. I don't love maintaining the plants themselves. So, garden soil is kind of my thing. And that's why I kind of knew that that bed back there wasn't really going to grow anything that I needed. Um, it was just, you know, I wanted to plant something. That's why these did much better because the soil is better. There aren't a lot of them because I didn't have a lot of seeds. And these did pretty well because this is excellent soil that's in here. And these are just our jalapenos, which I'm actually just going to quickly grab a couple just because I need them for lunch. But anyway, soil is kind of my thing. Soil is probably the reason your garden sucks, to be honest. Okay? That, it's a big deal. Soil sucks, okay? Your soil's probably not good enough or not the proper balance for what you're trying to grow. And yes, our uh, inflatables are down right now just because it's morning and I don't like having them up in the morning because, you know, they're boring when there's no lights. And you can't see the lights in the dark, in the light. You can't see their lights in the light. There we go. <laughs> I'm tired, okay? I was at my friend's social all night. I haven't been to bed yet. Anyway, doesn't matter. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Nobody knows what a social is anyway. Don't worry about it. So, I am going to do a series of videos specifically on soil. And I'm going to start that probably not next week, but the week after. So, these videos go live once a week. And um, I think next week's video is going to be building a planter. But because it's fall, I'm going to talk a lot about soil prep because fall is the perfect time to do soil prep. Okay, this is the time. This is when you want to do it. Just because you want to be able to use your beds in the spring. And also, since you can't plant in the fall, you might as well prep your beds. So I am going to, yeah, this is keeping the rabbits out. Anyway, I'm going to talk more about soil prep next Next video, but not necessarily next week. It might be the week after. I can't remember how I've scheduled the release. Anyway, <laughs> literally, soil prep is your thing. Yes, consider sun and shade, consider wind exposure and all that good stuff. But soil prep, if your gardens keep failing and you can't figure out why, soil. Yeah, like this is not great soil. I am going to revamp it. Uh, probably not next year, though. Also, green onions. Not the point. Anyway, <laughs> that's not the point. But that is about it for today because I just wanted to mention some of the things that you need to consider. So sun and shade, your temperatures all year long, wind exposure, yes. And then I'm going to do a whole bunch of more detailed videos on soil. This video did not quite go the way I wanted because I keep getting distracted and there's a cat. I'm not blaming the cat, except I am blaming the cat. Anyway, the dog wants me to come back in the house and she didn't want to come outside because... She's actually not fond of the camera right now. That's okay. Don't worry about that. So the dog wants me to come back inside. I can hear her. <laughs> anyway, that is about it for us here today at Anderson Acres. Hope you had fun in this kind of disjointed video that I really wasn't paying enough attention to uh, say anything properly. Because, you know, I'm tired. <laughs> anyway, that's about it for us. We'll see you tomorrow.